Chapter 8. Getting a Text Holy crap, it's a monster. I didn't know they'd come to this stuff. Wait, did he just call that guy boyfriend? Man, I was hoping to get his number. Maybe they're looking for a third to shack up with. All the comments went over your head. Your attention focused on Brian, who was frowning as he glanced from you to Blue. Hey, sorry, I didn't know you were already seeing someone. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been asking for a number. Brian said with an awkward smile. He was trying to make the word sound like a joke, but to your ears it sounded more like an accusation. Oh, it's all right. My boyfriend- I need air, you interrupted, brushing off the hand on your shoulder and almost running to the front door. You think someone called out to you, but you couldn't be sure. The fresh air outside and lack of room heat would normally refresh you, but instead you found yourself nearly shaking. A corner of your brain noted how Blue's bike was parked next to your Honda as you walked up to your car. You found yourself resting your forehead on the glass, taking deep breaths. Boyfriend, you all right? He was there behind you, ten feet away. Seriously, how did this giant guy sneak up on you? You found yourself swallowing, trying to get rid of your dry throat. That was the first time someone asked, you said as you turned. Now you were shaking, and you just couldn't stop. It wasn't the cold air, just the emotions running through you. Blue cocked his head to the side as his bony forehead scrunched up. First time what? The first time anyone offered to give me their number. The first time someone was interested in dating me. You're being silly. You're my boyfriend, and we dated all... No, we didn't. You shouted noticing a couple of people staring at the two of you. You were way beyond caring at this point. When you only want to meet in secret, when you're too ashamed to be with a guy that you don't even want to tell your own fucking brother, it's not dating, you shouted, seeing Blue flinch and look to the ground. And you're definitely not boyfriends with that guy. Hell, we probably weren't even ever friends. I was just damn Tiffany understudy. Now Blue was staring at you, Cyan orbs shrinking to pinpoints, his large hands turning into fists as he stared at you. P please don't, don't say that. But it's what I am, isn't it? I'm the one you guys pick when she's not around, the one you suddenly call boyfriend when you don't want to be with her. But for the first time, Blue, some guy didn't see me as a replacement, as an understudy, you said, pointing a finger at the bar. For the first time, a guy wanted to date me. Reader. For the first time, I wasn't second choice or someone to kill time with because the girl they really wanted was occupied. And, and you ruined it, you said, feeling your cheeks turn wet. Shoot, at what point did you start crying? You weren't even sure. You just couldn't stop it. Reader, I I'm sorry. Please don't cry. Blue said, approaching with hands up, eye lights no longer small. You backed away, finding yourself wiping the tears and snot with your sleeve. Just, just leave me alone. Freaking Tiffany understudy. Guess I should just get used to the role. You said, feeling both stupid and shitty. You took a seat on the grass, still trying to get the damp snot off your face with your sleeve. Seriously, crying like a baby over the missed chance at getting a guy's number? What was wrong with you? It probably wouldn't have even worked out. I'll, I'll fix it. Just, just stay here, okay? I'll be right back. Blue said, already turning and dashing back to the bar, his huge bone figure moving way too fast for someone so large. I shouldn't have done it. Blue muttered to himself as he surveyed the bar crowd. He shouldn't have eavesdropped when Sands and Papyrus were talking about the singles' night meetup while strolling outside. He shouldn't have tailed you when you headed to the bar. There were a lot of things he shouldn't have done. Pretending something to be one thing instead of the other can hurt a person, Blue, especially when they didn't agree to the pretending. I hurt him. I hurt him again. Blue muttered, eyes not finding the redhead which Reader had been talking to. He was always hurting you, 
why couldn't he do anything right? The therapist tried to warn him, but he just wanted to get another chance at choosing Reader instead to be with you. He didn't want to put you through pain, but he did want to bring her pain. With the guy nowhere in sight, he dashed back outside and in a single leap jumped on a large truck nearby. He ignored the angry yelling of the bouncer as his night vision instantly took into account every person heading towards their vehicle. It took less than a minute to spot the guy, athletic and good-looking. <laughs> no wonder you were happy to have him interested. I'm good-looking, too, Blue muttered to himself as he jumped down and jogged towards the guy. At least he thought you found him good-looking. You always smiled when seeing his face before. The letter. She'd smile, too, but she was always smiling. First clue it was fake like her. She used it too much. Excuse me? Um, hello? Blue called out as he got close to the young man. The guy turned with a raised eyebrow, taking a couple steps back towards his car. Blue tried not to feel insulted. He knew some humans found monsters a rather intimidating sight and seemed to always get fearful at first. Oh, right. You're Reader's boyfriend. Can I help you with something? The guy said, tone clearly stating, What the hell do you want from me? I... about that. I'm actually just a friend. Hell, we probably weren't even ever friends. He didn't mean it. Blue muttered to himself, momentarily forgetting he was supposed to converse with a human. I'm sorry. Didn't mean what? Oh, um, nothing. What I'm trying to say is we're just friends and I've, um, been too overprotective. It's why I said that stuff at the bar. Blue said, scratching the back of his skull. It was sort of the truth. He had wanted to protect Reader. He just went about it wrong. You see, my brother was killed recently. Blue said, last words coming out softer. Wait. The word killed wasn't totally correct. It implied someone intentionally killed him. It was an accident. Shouldn't he have said a different word? But it feels so right. Oh god, I'm so sorry, the man said, appearing at a loss for words. It's all right. A reader has been trying to help me, and tonight... I, well, screwed things up for him. You were about to exchange numbers, and I ruined it. I'm hoping if I give you his number, then you'll give him a chance. Reader has been trying to help him, getting him to go to therapy, trying to fix the machine so the rest of his family was returned. And in thanks, Blue hurt him and made him cry. I don't know. I mean, I'm not looking for drama. The guy said, scratching his chin. Translation, he wasn't looking for Blue to make drama. There won't be any drama, I promise. I'm going to give him space from now on. Blue said, nearly winced at saying the words. An instinct in him screamed to chase this human away and keep Reader for himself. Reader didn't want him as a friend or a boyfriend, though, and he had to accept it was all his own fault. Well, I don't want to mess up your friendship or anything, how about you give me his number, and I'll text him. We'll see how things go from there. Name is Brian, by the way, Brian said as he pulled out his phone. Nice to meet you. I'm Blue, Blue said before listing the number. Brian might be lying. He learned a while ago some humans were liars. She was the worst liar. Still, there was nothing else he could do, so he headed back to Reader hoping you stayed just like he asked. Ding! You had finally calmed down enough to hear a beep from your phone. You pulled it out to see a message on the screen. Hey, it's Brian. Your monster friend explained how you really weren't a couple. Maybe we can get a coffee sometime. Oh, good! He didn't lie! You stared dumbly from your phone up to the skeleton's face, which was a foot from yours. Keys, please! Blue said, hand outstretched. I... what? You're not exactly at your best. I'll drive us home and get my bike later. Blue said with a wink. You were sort of on autopilot and pulled out your keys before thinking about it. The phalanges nimbly picked them up, and then Blue straightened up, staring at you expectantly. You stumbled off the ground, 
looking from your car to his bike. But what if someone tries to steal it? You asked, walking to the passenger side. Unlike Red, who liked choppers, Blue had a cruiser, a current-year Harley-Davidson, which cost triple his old Honda. I'll have Classic Paps drive me back here after we get home. Besides, this will give you a chance to text Brian. Can't text and drive, after all. Blue said with a wagging finger as he entered the driver's side. You nod dumbly as you got in, pulling your seatbelt on. You found yourself looking back at the text, not quite believing it was there. What did you say exactly? Just the truth. We're not boyfriends, just friends. Uh, and just how great a guy you are. I'm sure you are going to have a fantastic date with him. Blue nearly shouted with confidence as he drove the two of you out of the parking lot. Thanks. You probably shouldn't be thanking him considering he nearly ruined the night, but you could see he was trying to fix it, and he was finally admitting you weren't boyfriends. The therapy sessions were helping, and if they were helping with this, maybe they'd help him with dealing with Stretch's death. You're welcome, reader. And, um, I want to ask something. That thing you called yourself, is that a nickname someone called you? I mean, did someone at the mansion actually say you were... I don't want to talk about it, you muttered, putting your phone away. Sans and Papyrus were going to have so many questions when they saw your puffy face and snot-covered shirt. Maybe you'd clean yourself up at your cabin before seeing them. Okay, we won't talk about it. Just relax, Blue said, going at a leisurely pace on the road. Red stared out the window seeing you step outside your cabin and heading towards Axe and Trap's cabin. Oh, wait, they got the new name Sands and Papyrus since you were best buds with them. He wondered what you'd be talking to them about. He wondered where you were the past couple of hours. He wondered if you were ever going to come to the mansion to visit them, and maybe even him. Wasn't nearly this hard with the bitch, Red muttered to himself leaning back on his bed with hands under head. Then again, maybe he should have seen something was off about that. It was just so easy for all of them to instantly get into her good graces. For her to want to do something with every one of them and be friends with all of them. What was the end game? He muttered to himself. She wanted them all to stay and was willing to destroy the machine to make it happen. Thinking on it, she always got more from them versus the other way around. Gifts from some of them, attention from others, and just plain hot sex as well. She was getting it all. No wonder she didn't want it to end. <sighs> He's different, though, Red muttered, pulling out his phone. The freaks weren't the only ones who got your picture. He texted it to himself without you noticing. You weren't instantly going to be best friends with the rest of them because of a few compliments and invites. The situation with Classic Pap said as much. You only became real friends with people. You didn't fake it just to get something. And real friendship was going to be a lot harder to earn when it came to you. <laughs> Maybe even more than friends, Red said with a grin, grabbing his own crotch and giving it a tug. He was attracted to him and he'd be lying if he said he didn't get a boner when protecting you from Creepy Blue. The way he held you and gave the nut job a good kick had been an instant turn-on. A knock suddenly came from the door. Hey, Red, can I come in? Speaking of said creepy skeleton. Sure thing, Red said, getting in a sitting position as he put his phone away. He was getting ahead of himself had to work on getting you to want to hang out before he convinced you this edgy skeleton could show you some fun. The door opened, showing Blue, who quickly walked in and closed it behind him. I'll keep this quick. Tiffany understudy. Red's jaw instantly went slack, hanging from his mouth, a red sweat drop forming on his forehead. Oh, good. At least my second guess was right. Uh, second guess? Why, yes. Reader let the nickname slip, but wasn't willing to say who gave it to him. I went to Black first with the words, but he just looked confused. Blue said as he approached slowly. He was forming each hand into a fist, giving it a good crack with the help of the other. 
You, on the other hand, appear to instantly recognize the words, so I'm guessing you're the one who gave him the nickname, Blue said, cyan lights disappearing and leaving behind hollow sockets. The broad shoulders flexed, thick neck moving from one direction to the other. As a fellow fighter, Red instantly recognized how one warmed up for a brawl. I, I, I was drunk. I know it was insulting, but I know better now how stupid it was to say it, Red said. A part of him wanted to head outside and apologize right then. Forget about friends or even friends with benefits. Apparently he had to work on just being tolerated if you were still hurting from the stupid nickname. Now you see, here's the problem. That's not good enough, so I'm going to have to, well, beat you up, Blue said. Lights back in place and cheerful smile plastered on his face. Phalanges grabbed his sweater and pulled him up. Seriously? You think you have the right to punish me for my mistakes after the crap you pulled? Red snarled, slapping the hand away and matching his happy expression with a menacing scowl. Yeah, he knew he fucked up. But seriously? This guy was fucking the bitch as Reader confessed his feelings. If anyone should get their bony butt kicked for hurting Reader, it was this guy. Oh, I know I'm a hypocrite, but it doesn't change the fact my fist is going to crack your skull. Feel free to fight back, though. I know I deserve some punches myself. Blue said, giving Red a push. The large skeleton hit a wall. Plaster and wood instantly breaking under his weight. He was outright growling now, a sound so animalistic no human could imitate it. Before coming to this world, he would have been terrified of fighting with his one hit point. Luckily, his hit point number grew the longer he stayed in this timeline. Blue still had more, but Red could make up for it by fighting fiercer. And don't think about shortcutting. I activated the device in the basement which stops that stuff, Blue said, bones the size of baseball bats forming in his hands. The fight didn't even start yet, and he was breathing hard. It wasn't exhaustion, just pure excitement. In the back of his mind, Red noted Blue wanted this for more than just payback. Oh, you bet I'm not running. We've all been giving you special treatment because no one wants to upset poor Blue after his bro got dusted. <laughs> oh, fuck it. It's time you got what you deserved, Red said, his own bones forming up. He'd hold off on the gaster blaster, could end up destroying the mansion. Bones would be enough, though, for this marshmallow. Bring it on! <laughs>